today's guest is my friend and uh, a very uh, experienced quantity surveyor, Stefano Verugi. And I'm very, very, very happy for uh, he uh, because he accepted my invitation. Hi, Stefano. Thank you for joining me. Hello, Petro. Hope you can hear me right. Yeah, yeah. The connection. I, so. Yes. Everyone, uh, we just got the confirmation that the, that this works. Uh, so uh, that's amazing. Okay. Uh, before uh, we dive uh, right into these things, let's um, give uh, Stefano the chance to present himself a, a little bit to say a few words about uh, him, and then we can proceed with our uh, today's topic. Okay, so my name is Stefano Berugi. I'm a quantity surveyor, and uh, my background is in uh, construction, mainly. And uh, I did uh, basically the whole range from uh, site supervision to project management contract management and bill of quantities, of course. Uh, I live in uh, work in Ghana for the past 20 years. Most of the uh, 20 years, uh, uh, I spend my time here and then I make uh, Ghana my country. So uh, I'm, work I'm currently working with the um, engineering company from Italy with the branch uh, in Accra, Ghana, and we are doing railways. Uh, that's uh, quite an experience for the past seven years and the challenge at the same moment, but uh, gave me opportunity also to expand my knowledge. So uh, recently, I mean, let's say less than a year ago, I thought that would be uh, good for my uh, skills to learn how to use Blender and uh, specifically Blender BIM because of the, as I thought at the beginning, in fact, it was, could be a useful tool for my workflow to do quantity takeoff primarily. And it was actually good. So in fact, uh, that's why we are here. <laughs> okay. Uh, did you try any other tools before uh, giving Blender BIM uh, uh, a chance? Well, I, previously, for some time, I worked with the SketchUp and some tools inside SketchUp for quantity extraction. Of course, it's nothing near what uh, Blender BIM can offer. And uh, my, being Italian, of course, I use Primus software for the quantity so they, so especially quantities and price lists and so on and so forth. And just recently, not too, for too long a time, I started using a, a Primus IFC. Oh. Because, uh, the concept of uh, BIM for me, I'm quite relatively new to it. So uh, in fact, if during this session, I use some term, which is not appropriate, I, please uh, apologies because uh, I'm not yet 100% into this. And I, I, I started experiencing Blender BIM it was a bit uh, of a task at the beginning because I didn't know where to go. But now I'm, I'm more familiar with the tool and I have to say that uh, it's quite a good one. Amazing. Okay, so what are you show, going to show us today? Okay, if I can take this screen, share screen. Yeah, let me know if it doesn't work. You should be able to do that. Okay, tell me please if you see the. the yes, I can see your screen. Yes, I can. So, do quick it. A, a quick one is to for me to open a, a, a model. This is a very small model, which is a little station on the, with the platform and so on. So, this is basically a model. And uh, let's say that I want to extract quantities and create a, a bill of quantities out of it. So, I go here. I prepared already a CSV uh, file with the, some info and queries that I'm going to show you later. So I download the um, and this is the bill of quantities. So this so, is something that is... we can prepare. This is something that we can have some templates and we can up, uh, take import in our models and use. Yeah. Pretty much so. It's basically, if you use the same uh, uh, naming, for instance, uh, and uh, when you are using uh, uh, IFC uh, classes or types, and you are constant, consistent with the naming, you, you can use the same template over different models and uh, obtain the same result. Of course, uh, these, uh, these figures you can see here, I mean, uh, this is uh, rate. Uh, I hope you can see the screen. Yeah. Uh, there are some items and uh, quantity and, and the cost. Of course, the cost is just uh, something random I put there for the presentation. 
but it's pretty much it. So, so this is the total of the project, 46,000, whatever get be behind it. And each item is uh, extracted quantity from the various uh, uh, elements. I want to show you the, the, the document itself. So I use it for the, can you see the Yes. File? Yes, yes. Okay, this is it. I learned this from, uh, sorry, merited to Yassin, because he's the one with these videos uh, who initiated this. Uh, I mean, for me, it was uh, quite a discovery, the fact that uh, I can use a, a CSV file. I can put some uh, description, like this is ordinary description, like uh, whatever's in the item, uh, some rate put there. And then they have a property of the elements, like the area, the volume, so on and so forth. And this is what the magic happens because of the query. So once you know the how to use the query, which is, uh, I mean, if you know Excel, it's not that different. From, of course, you need to be familiar with the, the use of it. But uh, now there are some, there is some documentation available for people to apply that in their workflow. So what does this uh, do? The, the spreadsheet, this uh, CSV. Can, so this, you can use anything. So this is a, just a CSV software, but you can use Excel, you can use a, a, any other program. Basically, you, you put this one, this one, the, at this item, the 100 millimeter, you can read it yourself. This is the rate, cross area, and this one extracts all the elements matching this uh, criteria. So when uh, I go back to the, the model, This is it. This is what comes because of these elements that are here. Can you see the? Yeah. Yeah, it's readable, no issues. Okay. So I can even select those elements that have been captured by the query. Hopefully. There they yeah. are. They are sorry, there, sorry yeah. the, the, the 3D is a bit. Uh, no, it's fine. It's fine. Uh, sometimes you can uh... see you can see the items. Mm -hmm. right? yeah, yeah. So the parts. I'm now selecting the parts. That is the parts. So and all the area, the cubic, the, the measurement that I took off. Mm -hmm. And I think this is quite a, a remarkable feature. Feature because it's like uh, what I I found out that it takes less time to convert a two D model from AutoCAD for instance, into a three D beam model. Uh, everybody knows that uh, now BIM, uh, Blender Beam is an uh, authoring software directly working in IFC. So, no exports and nothing of such. And uh, you can, uh, as I did, this one well, I did it uh, in two days. And I'm not a model. So, I just uh, happen to be a QS who is trying to use this piece of software for me to, to, I mean, to, to get the most out of it. And mm -hmm. I'm very happy. I'm, of course, I keep promoting this idea, but I'm also yeah. <laughs> excited about it. Yeah, so this is very impressive. So you are you are a quantity surveyor and you are not a modeler. And even with this, you manage to model, like uh, you, you say that it's better to convert a 2D drawing into a model, into a BIM model here in with Blender BIM, IFC natively, and then to take the quantity takeoff, then do it um, all the way by just using drawings. Um, before before you answer me this questions, a uh, question, guys, please tell me one thing. What tool are you using actually to do quantity takeoffs? I'm very curious to hear. So Stefano, would you say that it's better to just convert 2D drawings into a, into a V model yeah. and take the quantity? You, you can see that I left as an annotation, I left the floor plan. Mm -hmm. I hope you can see it. Let yeah, me, yeah, let me yeah. It's, it. it's visible. Yes, yes. So this is the floor plan from the AutoCAD, right? So there's a bit of a, a work to to make it simple, you no? Know? And then you can uh -huh. start building on it. So you want to import first. You want to import the foundation. Then you quickly do the the, the foundation itself, as it been designed, engineered, mm -hmm. and then you go up. Let's say that a, a model like this, uh, for the building itself, uh, the structure will take, uh, I don't know, a day. And then they put on, put some, um, of course, information. Put some walls and stuff. Mm -hmm. 
yeah, and also the information. But the, what I find extremely useful here, because uh, in a way, Blender Beam forces you to use in this information from start. So you use a yeah. word class. Mm -hmm. The type is being defined and so on and so forth. So I don't know how much the audience is uh, used to using this uh, uh, Blender Beam, but it's, I mean, you can't do anything else but uh, build in a world. Then it's up to you to define the world, the, the characteristics uh, and the properties and so on. But essentially, once you prepare the model and you cross-check the model into a viewer, for instance, that you make sure that the model is okay, mm -hmm. so it's uh, accurate enough. Mm -hmm. And then you can play with the uh, different uh, buildings, of course, in this uh, in the specific. Uh, again, this is a simple model. Man. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's got only 300 something, 380 mm -hmm. elements inside. But uh, it's uh, fairly accurate, so I can I can turn off the, I guess, spaces. I get uh, I get uh, walls. There mm -hmm. are some mm -hmm. cable troughs and so on, because this is a technical bit. Yeah. So there I are doors. Right. I, I think another important thing here that is important to mention is the fact that this model can also be used for other things afterwards. You can use it for 4D and uh, for building and for maintenance and so on, right? The value doesn't stop at just doing the quantity takeoffs. You can do more with it. Yeah, the, the good thing is like the bad product of this exercise is something that can be used by other trades, by other disciplines. So once you, you, once you finish, in fact, a QS shouldn't be doing this, uh, in my view. It should be rather a Rasman, the designer himself. Designers sometimes are too picky about the software. They want to use their own. But so long as you have uh, either a PIN from a different piece of software or an AutoCAD, you can still develop this one. A Rasman won't take longer than a day or two. Mm -hmm. The beauty of this is like uh, after you finish it with your IFC model, the quantities are there already. So you don't have to, if you, I don't know whether you are familiar with the traditional way of uh, doing quantity takeoff. So people, especially in this uh, part of the world, uh, people take the, the printout, they look, they read the, the dimensions and they note down in the Excel sheet and then do the calculation on the side. So there is no direct connection oftentimes between the drawings and the data being the, the quantity. Mm -hmm. Not to mention the fact that uh, when you mention when you name a wall with a particular code or classification, for instance, there's something that is also a big advantage. Yeah, that's uh, that's basically once you finish designing the, the model, you've done most of, most of the work, and any change at all will be also uh, updated. So, in fact, I wanted to show something. I can leave this uh, model now. I have a simple, I have a simple exercise, for instance. So this is just a slab. Eh? So this is just a slab. Yes. Okay. And they say that uh, I prepare this uh, this slab in a way that I can now. Uh, I want to do some costing. Okay. So for uh, for the slab to be able to get the quantity of this slab. I just press on the element, shift Q, and I have all the. You have the Q set. All the, all, all the Qs, yes. So this software, of course, I did it only for one element, but I can do it with the thousands of them. It's the same. OK, if you have a not such a fast computer, it might take a few seconds. But generally speaking, it's something that uh, you don't even know. So once this slab is here, and the, and the width and length are calculated, I can go to the, I, I just have a, 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 a BOQ. It's not a BOQ, but it's this some price here, OK? So these are some cost items, which are, could be the bill of quantities. What I wanted to show you is like the simplicity of uh, adding a quantity to the element. So it's 0. I press the slab. I press here. I need to put uh, gross volume. And that's it. So if I want to assign a cost to it, I go here. Now it's 150. I just change it to one. And that's it. It's been updated. 
say that the course is now updated, but I happen to change the edit of the, the slide. Sorry. Uh, I'm a bit clumsy here. So let's let's uh, change it a, a bit more. It's so okay, it was 6.14. Huh? Now I do this again. I press Shift Q again. It doesn't change. <laughs> For some reason, it doesn't change. Shift Q. Well, this is unfortunate, but uh, I hope uh, um, it, it was working. So basically, what I'm trying to say here, and the quantity here, I'm, I'm probably I'm doing something that uh, is not appropriate. But what I'm trying to say here is like, uh, if, when you change the, uh, when you edit the element, uh, the quantity updates. Mm -hmm. And I can let's assure that it's working. <laughs> I don't know, probably uh, now for some reason, uh, probably it was in the cost, that's why. It's a 614. By the way, the, let's move on if you like on, the, on something else. 614. So, yeah, uh, we can go through some questions that we got here and then yeah, we sure, can sure. show because I'm like, this is definitely we, we should cover. So, a uh, question from Edward Are you calculating from geometry or from giving properties? Like in this case, like that given property is generated with Blender BIM. But in some, in some cases, you you should actually have that. From, from from models, but um, that depends on the quality of the export that you get. Because if you get an ISC2X3, you might miss that. Or uh, if uh, the modeler or the exporter doesn't do that, doesn't put that information there, then you might be in a issue. But you, please go ahead. What, what do you think about this? Yeah, the, you can see the, the green line, yeah, which is like a polyline in Coca, which defines the, the slab. So width and, and length are easily taken from this one. And the thickness of this line is determined by the type of this uh, slab, which is uh, here. You, you did some, uh, recently you did some video on this one. Mm -hmm. And you post it on YouTube. So the thickness of the slab is here. So if I want to change the thickness of the slab, that's, let's say 0.25, I hope this time it works. And now this lab should be using a different volume. Mm -hmm. for some reason. Yeah, but so Edward, okay. so Edward is saying like, are you calculating from geometry or from given properties? I think the right answer here is like, the property is generated based on the geometry. In this case, in Blender yeah. BIM. And I think the same is also in other softwares. The, that value is generated based on the geometry and then you map it into a property or a quantity okay. set. I think uh, what is what you're saying is correct. Um, I'm not sure about this, but uh, it's like for me the geometry is uh, the way the, the slab is being constructed. So again, it's a polyline excluded on the on the z axis. Mm -hmm. So it's pretty much easy. Now they can be more complex because you can uh, modify the slab and give it a, a different profile and different. You can create some voids inside, and that's usually calculated. Uh, from time to time, I cross check the quantities uh, by myself. If mm. they are, they, they, if, if they actually correspond to what you expect, and they are pretty much on point, they are pretty much okay, accurate. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, another question. If I remember correctly, not all quantities are included as property sets. Uh, are you taking some of the dimensions from the extrusion of the elements? Hello. Uh, I can explain this because I know how this works. Uh, so. If you don't have the quantities in there, means that they have not been exported properly. That information has not been mapped. In the Blender Beam case, if you are modeling in Blender Beam case with Shift Q, you will generate all the normal quantities or dimensions that each kind of element should have in that Q set, in what is called Q set, if you can show it on your screen, right? You can, of course, do that as well using with calculate. You can also do that and calculate from the face and you can, but this is a, this is not what we're doing here. With the costing, we try to get this information that is already presented in the model, right? We are, we are saying that all the elements should have a Q set or a, a custom property set with the dimensions. But yeah, ideally a Q set, right? A quantity set. 
So the reason why it was work wasn't working before because I didn't select the this particular icon. So that will allow me to when I press the shift Q to update the quantities. Now the quantities are updated as you can see. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So because yeah. So and then you say that all the other items have been updated because all the other items were relying on the same and all the same item. Okay. So this is quite uh, important. So the, especially the editing part. Now for for quantities that are not part of the properties, as you said, I believe is because of the when you export the models from different softwares, that's what you encounter. Sometimes mm -hmm. the, the the exporting of the of the quantities is not up to a certain level. But again, if you if you stay within a vendor beam, at least for me, in my experience, it should be fine because the way the quantities are calculated uh, are pretty much reliable so, so far. At least mm -hmm. I didn't find any particular discrepancy. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Martin Wiss is asking, you imported the CSV file, uh, file. How do you, but how do you construct the CSV file? Write it by hand or generate it somehow? What classification system is used? How are the entities classified and how are their quantities sets defined? I think this is up to you, right? You created yourself and you choose what you put in there. The the pattern of the columns is uh, they are fixed. So the hierarchy defines the, the tree structure of the bill of quantities in this case. The identification of that is nothing that, uh, I mean, it's just the identification where you can put the, the cost breakdown structure. But can you, name of... sorry, sorry for jumping in. Can you generate at least an empty template from Blender Beam that you can put in the data or you need to create this CSV from scratch? No, there are two ways here, mainly. The, the first one is in fact using this uh, template, but the template, of course, if you start from scratch, you only have to make sure that you use this sequence of columns with this naming. Yeah, and how do you know that? How do you know that? That's the problem. Like a, a beginner yeah. will, would not know that, right? Yeah, the, a beginner should watch uh, Yassin's video where <laughs> he explains it. <laughs> I, but, uh, no, but the, the point is like, yeah, is, I get your point. In fact, it, is, uh, it was a bit difficult to understand because this is not the only one, the cost schedule we can import. There's also a, a schedule of rates, for instance, even a, a program of works can be imported this way. Mm -hmm. So the, by importing CSV, you allow vendor beam to pass the, the model through a different uh, different schema, different pattern. But this is pretty much okay. If you want to know this, yeah, uh, you have to okay, you have to watch some videos and then uh, be okay, be part of uh, Beam Voice or, <laughs> or Ozark that uh, platforms or or just to contact us uh, on uh, on LinkedIn. LinkedIn. And yeah. Uh, yeah, LinkedIn probably is the best because uh, they're more popular. Huh? Yeah, but, but but again, it's something that uh, I mean, it's like uh, it's a standard. So it's like uh, that's what uh, at the moment uh, Blender Beam is using to allow this. Okay, but if you go to but if you go this, black I mean, to Blender Beam, if it Beam. looks uh, scary, it's not that much because all these columns are basically a simple arrangement of uh, that you can find in any view of contents. Ah. What is the, the and is the more the the property and query where you need to put the data that uh, to obtain what you expect. But this can is you... gross area, gross mm -hmm. volume. Go ahead. Yeah, can you please go in Blender Beam uh, and like see like if you go if you create a like you have this here right? Can like from here isn't possible to ex to create a CSV that is going to be empty with all these columns? Then, then you can just fill in. Uh, yes and no. Actually, it's more no than yes. Um, okay. You can export this uh, BOQ or whatever uh, post schedule you prepare. So you can export here. That it produces a, a CSV. Uh, so you have to know, that, but this is not. It doesn't do the at the moment the round trip. It's okay. like not re-import what you have exported and treat it as a, a cost schedule that you can actually import. But uh, if this is scary, I don't know, because it's, this is something that oh, prevents people from doing it uh, that, or using it. Uh, it's just a template. It's just a set of columns with a particular headers scheme. So once okay. you know that one, I believe, uh, I mean, for, for I don't see any QS who finds this difficult, but 
again you never yeah. know yeah yeah but uh, so you, you when you start like the the point the starting point is to watch yasin's video about uh, how to do this and he will explain in that video and you just create a csv using those columns and uh, with the values that makes sense yeah not only uh, yasin also made available the original uh, template CSV file ah okay the template so if you go to his uh, website i don't have it at hand now but uh, it's very i mean you can go there download the data the the, the, the model he uses in his own video yeah then you can you can uh, so by following that the, it's not updated in terms of uh, user interface it's not the latest version of uh, render bin but in a way it's pretty much close to it and mm -hmm. of course uh, i always encourage people to contact and to share and to participate to these events and then so for people to if you join uh, ozark uh, your your platform and uh, uh, linkedin and uh, you can you can get in touch with people who are supposed to know something I don't, mm -hmm. I'm no expert here in terms of uh, Blender Beam, of course, but uh, uh, it wasn't. Uh, it was difficult at the beginning because I didn't know where to go. But if you know how, where to enter, the door to enter, uh, I think you you'll be safe enough. And then contact. One thing I wanted to show you, uh, show everybody. Sorry, yeah. is uh, let's go back to the original uh, um, model. So. One thing uh, that uh, I want to, uh, I think the uh, last time we met, uh, you mentioned this one, is the very powerful tool, which is the spreadsheet. So thanks to this one, you can export the elements in a, in a, in a spreadsheet. And again, you have to know uh, the, the queries, and this can also is called the, the uh, selector syntax. I don't know whether this is too technical, but uh, again, this is the syntax you're supposed to use in order to have uh, uh, to extract quantities from uh, a model in a different uh, fashion. So let's say you want to use only, if you want to select the, how many uh, elements are in the model, I can go to, I can download my, is it JSON? JSON is a format. JSON, so yeah. This is a search. Hmm? This is a search. I click on export FC and I select this open hopefully. Let me see. This is very powerful. There's a spreadsheet. There you go. So let's put this one next to each other. Let's go. You can see it in real time, this classification. No? For instance, this one I just uh, listed the, the classes not the elements the classes okay and i have prepared another one to list uh, all the elements so i hope this is uh, in the element yes export i uh, use the same uh, you know if you look at this one you give me some time i hope you will fail me maybe there you have to refresh it you, yeah no no it's, it's already refreshed so it's counting the number of beams, the number of columns, the number of covering. This is a very simple uh, extraction. But it tells you quickly, or relatively quickly, the, the number of items, the elements, sorry, in, in the model. Mm -hmm. If you want to be more creative, let's use the one, that they count uh, number three. Because I, before this meeting, I prepared this. So it doesn't work at this. Um, number three. And I export again, same, same. It takes a little time because some, some, in the in the Dion's video, he was using uh, 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 like Excel, but this one is a CSV. It automatically updates without the refresh. Hmm? So now you can see what basically you can see there all the elements grouped by the class FC class and the type used and how many they are. So if you like, I can continue. I can go up to a production of a, a spreadsheet where you can see not only the elements, the class, the type, but also, for instance, uh, the material assigned to it, yeah. the size, the, the, the volume, the length, the, the profile used. For instance, columns use a particular profile. And so all the information 
which is already inside the model, can be then extracted and exported as a CSV, could be Excel, ODS. Then from CSV or, or Excel, you can go and enrich what you, what you need. Mm -hmm. For instance, if you want to do some join, you can do like a database uh, and so on. You can export as in SQL for those who are familiar with that. SQL is very powerful because you can actually do a lot. So this is uh, what I wanted to show you about the quantities. So again, if the BOQ does not satisfy you, because it probably is too, I don't know, you don't like it, uh, the, the, extra, the uh, exporting, it to, exporting it to CSV gives you the chance to then manage the data the way you like. I agree. OK. Um... Tell me one thing, uh, what software are you using to open this uh, CSV that it's updating automatically? Model it's not Libre. No, also Libre, uh, you need to click on the refresh. Yeah. I, I, oh, open, eh? open office. Uh, no, it's more than CSV. There is a free version and the paid okay. version, but it is, it's quite cheap actually. Okay. So it's, uh, I find it very useful because you cannot do any calculation inside it, but of course you can, uh, you can use it for these uh, purposes. Just to, I wish this was already in Blender BIM because uh, some softwares, for instance, they use uh, like uh, FreeCAD, they use a spreadsheet and then they have a chance to visualize uh -huh. the exporting within inside the software. But it's not a big deal. It's like you can use uh, modern CSV or any other software. Mm -hmm. Good to go. Maybe we'll get at some point. We don't know, but uh, yeah, maybe later. Uh, and then, uh, so for you, uh, even we can use IFC CSV, right? This is IFC CSV here, and then is the costing. If you go back to to the other stuff, um, why is preferred the other way where we need to create the CSV and not using this what you just showed us right now? What would you still go and use the other one, the other module in Blender BIM? You made the difference between bill of quantities uh, and uh, spreadsheet. Yes, yes, exactly. Why why would you use bill of quantities instead of, instead of using this spreadsheet import export? Well, sometimes you only need uh, to to collect the data in a sort of a group form or summary form, and uh, so at at the glance you can quickly process the model through this. Like you do with, uh, I believe, with the IDS. I'm not an expert, but uh, I saw your video. I watched your video, and then I was particularly impressed about the validation process of the model. And this one too. If if you need to know, for instance, uh, or comparison or whatever you need, like a patch, you know, in Blender Beam or any other tool, it's a tool, in fact, that you can use. Now, the the bill of quantities is more like uh, a BOQ. Like you can also use uh, a. If you like, I can show you because I prepared something. Uh, you can also use. Uh, resources. You can establish some resources, a set of resources, and use them to calculate, uh, for instance, the, the, the cost of, a, of an item. So in this case, uh, you will have a better chance of uh, using the same method that you would use uh, in a, let's say a normal environment. Mm -hmm. So where you have the bill of quantities, you have a price list, you have the list of resources with their own price and cost quantity and the, the way the, the price has been arranged. So the, the what is called the rate buildup. So the way the, the, the rate is being formed. So there are some calculation within it. So a certain type of concrete that can have a particular amount of cement, sand, this and that. And that can be organized inside even Blender B. I understand. OK, that's amazing. Um... Let's go over a question from Martin Wies again. He has, this is a long question from before the session. And this is mostly about first part. It's about uh, the weight, weight of elements, which I don't know. That's something a bit more special. And uh, is not the first thing that people are looking for in uh, QTO. Uh, this is more like, uh, yeah, for uh, ordering and uh, for site uh, planning and so on. But uh, he has some interesting questions here. So let's see if we can condense this into something, how to calculate the total weight of the building and the total weight of various materials <laughs> in the Inter building. Interest. Interest I don't know something. if this is possible. So how and how to specify oh, weights wow. of various materials correctly in quantity sets or similar. Do you know anything around this? 
No, the good news is yes, it is possible, of course. The not the bad news, but the, it's a the downside is like you have to prepare or arrange the extraction in a way that I mean we know the density of concrete, cement, blocks, of elements. Using Blender Beam, you can assign the you can set the property set. You can actually save a, that particular detail, and that's a, like a multiplication exercise. It's not a, like a off the shelf ready option in Blender Beam. But I think any any quantity will there once you have the elements identified by their own characteristics. So a beam of a particular name of a particular type uses a particular material. And because of the material density, you can then knowing the materials inside the, the model and the volumes, it's a multiplication exercise. But it's an interesting exercise. I'd like to go deeper on this because I calculated the weight of the building. <laughs> Something that you'd like to know. Yeah, like uh, about this. for me, for me, the practical a practical use case it's uh, to know the weight of uh, reinforcement, to plan different uh, casting uh, faces, and how to how the logistics around the the um, the sure. reinforcement on site. Now let let me show you something that, like, for instance, uh, uh, I can use it in this uh, page. So I select this slab. Oh. Mm -hmm. I mean, it is classified as slab, it's a volume. So if, when you enter into the property sets here, not only do you have the, the quantities, but also the property sets. Mm -hmm. Then there are some uh, options here, uh, property sets, so the custom set, and then you can, can select the slab common. And here you can, you can uh, add some elements to it, like if it's new, if it's external, load bearing, so you can enrich the data related to this uh, particular element. But you can also go into the uh, concrete element general. And where is it? Okay, here. Yeah. And then it, there you, where you can actually uh, mark the, the quantity of reinforcement per cubic meter or per area. If you have a slab, for instance, with the constant uh, thickness, you can use the, the area mm -hmm. instead of the volume. I don't know whether this makes sense uh, to, to everybody, but it's like uh, here you can establish the cover, the concrete, uh, the reinforcement of volume ratio. Hmm? The, of course, the, the this reinforcement is, area ratio. This is critical information that usually is put in a custom property set. So, yeah, this is the right way to do it. But is there one for the weight? Because I'm not, uh, I, I don't think it's there. Well, again, if we start from the volume, and you can set the reinforcement volume ratio, ah. it gives you the total weight. Mm -hmm. This is a, a, a piece of concrete element general that can be extracted the, the same way I showed you before with the it can be put in the in a the bio cube or in, in the in your spreadsheet. Uh -huh. in, I mean your CSV, export CSV. From this one, I'm pretty much confident that you can you can do it. So mm -hmm. um, how much reinforcement is there into this model? Yes, you can done do it provided that you set these properties. Uh, that you don't have to do it for each and single item, but you have to use, you can use the type. So all columns produced with the same class type, of course, will have the same characteristics and that can be uh, copied to many. So if I want to add a reinforcement, let's say this lab has a 60 kilograms per cubic meter, then say that there's more than one, I select also this one, copy property to selection, and all these labs selected, will inherit this particular property. Actually, they do not inherit it. You just uh, enter the, the you populate the, the property set with this particular value. Mm -hmm. Then yeah. you can put a cast in situ, you can put the class, the strength class, C25, C30, whatever that is. Mm -hmm. And so all, this is the basic information. Eh? If somebody, so this is a really, really, I mean, it's in BIM, this is something that if you don't know BIM, I didn't know much of BIM until recently. Uh, you you can do a lot because you, they, as, if you are good at uh, doing this, so they, I think it's a particular profession, right? a particular job, mm -hmm. that uh, mm -hmm. defining the the specifications or the elements or the the details, so to to populate this uh, um, property set, that gives the opportunity to those who like uh, in a tender, so the contractor receives the model with this type of information. Immediately, the, the, the contractor can jump on the, on the mm -hmm. pricing because uh, the more is defined here, this level, the better yeah. 
it's the life of those who have to use it afterwards. Yeah, I agree. Uh, Martin also says it would be interesting to see or discuss the quantification of mass of materials, not only numbers. I'm not really sure what he means with not only numbers because yeah, numbers, yeah. But um, uh, he he said this before the, no, the, the can, can you repeat it, please? Because uh, I didn't I didn't actually yeah. understand. Yeah, so it would be interesting to see or discuss the quantification of mass of materials, not the only mass. numbers. Yeah, the mass, like the weight, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Again, once you know the a particular uh, element is uses uh, a particular material, uh, again you have the volume of the element being material. You can translate it into volume mm -hmm. of material. But knowing the density, you can know the. Yeah, that's not weight. something happening automatically here. So you need to do that yourself, or or to, uh, to find yeah. it. Yeah. <clears throat> well, it's only the one click away. Mm -hmm. Because once you export the elements into into a, a CSV, extracting the volumes, for instance, of all the elements, I think I have some. Let me see yeah. if I, because I, I probably understand the where people come from. Because it could be something that, uh, let's say, number seven. Sorry, I had to load the model again. Yeah. Anyway, the the weight. The weight, uh, it, it's a bit complex. It's not as easy as the area or uh, like the length or the, the measurements or the volume. Uh, that's much easier to be generated directly from, from a geometry, right? Because here it depends. Like we have so many different materials, right? And uh, yeah. It, of course, more... of course. You, need to ask, you need to assign a particular material. Yeah. And because you can classify the materials, I can extract the materials for instance using this model in mm -hmm. the same way I did the, for the spreadsheet, the yeah. export. But we don't need to go so, to that depth because he has more questions. So it's cool. We just can stop here regarding this because he has more interesting ones. So let's try to see if we can cover them. Uh, how to quantify the total weight of a specific material or a material that have a specific IFC classification in the building? Again, you need to connect these two concepts. Um, I don't know if this is too clear clear enough. How to quantify oh, it, it, it? Makes sense. I, I, for you? I, I find it. Uh, I find it uh, not uh, a bit. Uh, it's okay. So if, if this is what uh, people need, the weight of the material, of course, uh, comes from the material itself. So each material, has, in most cases, has its own density. So the mass of a material is known. Mm -hmm. Concrete, uh, cement, uh, sand. Most likely, you use uh, uh, already known uh, variables. I mean, the, 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 it's no mystery about the, the weight of uh, reinforcement mm -hmm. given a particular size, for instance. Or you can also the density. So you can know a bar, the length and, and the density. It's not something that you have to uh, make, uh, produce, or calculate. So long as you apply that particular value mm -hmm. to the Volume. Of course, I understand the part because here it looks like we can only extract uh, <clears throat> geometries. Huh? But geometries, by applying the, the, the mass criteria, the density, yeah, yeah. Whatever, it can be converted. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, one uh, last question we get from Martin because, uh, yeah, uh, there were uh, almost everything were around this. But this one is actually, but again, it has to do with materials. How and this again? These are very advanced concepts, I would say. These are not for for the like. If you just start using Blender Beam, forget about this. It, it's a bit more complex. Start with simple stuff because otherwise you'll give up, and I don't want you to give up. Um, how aggregates affect quantification of numbers and the weights of materials to make sure that the weights of the parts are the parts of the parts that are not counted twi twice. Again, like mm. there are some aggregates. I think he means like when you have a wall, let's say an example, a wall with different layers, that is a, like an aggregate, uh, aggregate, right? With different kind of materials. You cannot take uh, like, you cannot use it as a concrete wall. Because <clears throat> yeah, you're... this is a, a question that uh, oftentimes uh, people ask. It's like a <clears throat> rabbit, for instance, you have a, a layered wall. Huh? So we have uh, the blocks and the plastic and so on and so forth. So you can use that one. You can also use it in Blender Beam, of course. But they say, okay, how can you calculate any different particular element of the world no? in the, when you do the quantity takeoff? 
-hmm. And I always uh, answer, uh, probably might not be naive, but I always answer that if you know the composition of the wall and you know the side area of the wall and you have, you know uh, the thickness of each layer, it's something that in Excel, everybody can do. So once you know the, with a high level of accuracy, the side area of the, all the elements that use this particular data set, it's not that difficult. But I wanted to show something that you can extract the layers into a CSV, into a table. So say that you have a, a number, like I do, a number of material, material sorry, elements that have a different layers. In, the, in my case here, I have a, a flooring, flooring with the tiling or screed or screeding, and uh, each of them have a particular thickness. Mm -hmm. So once you know the thickness of that layer and the composition of the layer set, uh, it's not like a science uh, to uh, convert it into a simple spreadsheet. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, okay. I, I, I think this is something that we want to uh, look into in the development of the of the software, of the Blender Beam, mm -hmm. if mm -hmm. this is actually needed. But I don't see, as a QS, I don't see this as a particular obstacle. Because it's like I can easily handle this in the, in the spreadsheet. Mm -hmm. Okay, it makes sense. Uh, and again, like, there are uh, many other things that maybe in Blender Beam yeah, are a priority, so I'm not sure. But yeah, it's an important uh, topic, but it might be like a niche or a, a, a smaller uh, amount of people would be interested in this. We are still trying to get the other more critical information, <laughs> like we don't get the, the volume. Like that, 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 like we still get a lot of models, like everyone, I see a lot of models without volume and other dimensions inside the area and gross area and yeah volume and so on so um but uh, of course yeah, this is if a i can say if I can, if I can say something mm -hmm. i i come from my past experience uh, for many years of course is more is more on the side in terms of management and stuff then uh, like the past uh, 20 years uh, i moved to uh, continuous surveying specifically and uh, up until recently we would use uh, autocad drawings and there was no information whatsoever so Jumping from the AutoCAD drawing converted to, into Excel, converted to many other things, to this particular, okay, this is an example, of course, there are many other valid uh, softwares around, probably it's more expensive, but it's a big jump. And it's like having the chance to quickly go into the quantities of a, of a, of a project, of a model, extracting the quantities like uh, on the fly, and convert them, I wanted to show you some, if you want, some application of rates, the way you can build up the rates. You can uh, uh, you can use uh, resources, connect the resources to the cost item to extract the value. I mean, this is quite a change to, for people who used to have in this, uh, go to the polyline in AutoCAD and extract this. Uh, uh, Primus has a chance to connect uh, a drawing to the cost items in the BOQ. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a fairly more advanced way of using the schedule of rates. And hopefully, uh, Blender Beam will catch up soon. Mm -hmm. But again, yeah. this is the reality for, I don't know, probably in Northern Europe uh, and other thing, parts of the world is uh, far more advanced. But it, uh, where, I, where I live uh, here, is like uh, people use uh, Word to prepare bill of quantities, not even Excel. So no, this is not the majority. But, there are some cases where I saw with my own eyes people using Word and, and they do the calculation with probably a calculator. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's like, uh, again, it's a paradigm shift where it goes from uh, uh, where the deliverable is just a design, meaning that the printout mm -hmm. and the information is to be humanly read and converted to, to something that uh, is totally different Yeah, in a better way. Yeah, yeah. great, great uh, point, uh, Stefano. We have a question from uh, Antonio Boza. Have you completely replaced other software with Blender Beam? If yes, how long did it take you? I didn't get the part, the first part. Uh, have, you, have you completely replaced other software with Blender Beam? If yes, how long did it take? Well, I didn't replace AutoCAD, not yet at least, because uh, working in, uh, in the railway, uh, of course, it's not just a building, a station, or just mm -hmm. a building. It's also the, 
electrical the signal track, and other electrical things. signal, the tracks, the bridges, and, and so on and so forth. So I personally use uh, AutoCAD, but uh, I'm planning on uh, leaving AutoCAD soon and uh, using uh, some different drawings, primarily uh, Blender. Um, Blender Beam is not yet uh, up the level of uh, 4x3 IFC, but I hope, th I, I think, I, I know that they are working on it. So soon we'll have the chance to operate at that. But I don't think many other softwares actually yeah. currently have for their chance. So, um, but because, of, so the, to answer the question about the software, for me it was Excel, let's say a few, let's say a few years back, Excel, AutoCAD, AutoCAD, Excel, Primus, Primus from Acad software. Then I, I introduced myself to uh, Python Pandas, which is a, a way, nice way of uh, treating data. And uh, it took me a little time to, to learn, but there's so much available nowadays, uh, YouTube mm -hmm. and so on, that you can easily jump on it. As a QS, I would strongly recommend people to use pan, Python Pandas for this, and uh, or Jupyter Notebook for the matter. So it would be like, is it like a, even though I'm not a young anymore, so I'm a part of my age or profession where you're supposed to be thinking about going and retire, I I enjoy doing this. So it's like, and this has been the big experience, which has been part of, of my life for the past, uh, what, eight months now, nine months. Uh, I think it's, it's really worth uh, doing it because it's like, I, I, I really recommend people, especially young ones. I, I do the same. I actually... I insist on my colleagues, you know, my younger colleagues are in the, the company to, to use it because it's something that it works. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can add something to this. So Antonio, it depends exactly. I don't know if you are asking Stefano, me or in general, but like you said, uh, Stefano can use this for uh, this. There are other people using it for 4D. Yasin Walid, who is developing the 4D module, he's using it for his project as well. You have Lloyd Basio, who has completely made the jump to modeling like right. he is the he is the prodigy if you want to follow like uh, he for, is. for modeling he is. he is the guy who did the jump two years ago he's fully using only blender beam and other free and uh, uh, open source and some of them uh, tools so uh, regarding modeling i can say that i fully embraced blender beam for beam coordination i run ids i check visually i I even started now to export my quantity takeoffs with Blender Beam uh, with uh, the spreadsheet exporter. I, do, I used only the spreadsheet exporter so far and it looks great. So I'm I'm using Blender Beam like as my main tool to, co to validate IFC models. I can say that and I've been doing that for the last half year, um, soon one year, I would say. Uh, and yeah, so it is possible. Like how much it will take you depends on your um uh, your eagerness your um uh patience how much time you have to invest depends from person to person like there are many factors here but what i can tell you like is it, it is definitely worthwhile i did not give up to any other tools that i'm using as a being coordinator uh but it still has a huge impact doesn't matter who uses whatever if you use any other tool you can still get a lot of value from blender beam if you are working with ifc models there is no other tool better for you if you are doing, uh, if you are using IFC mo uh, models because you will understand much better IFC. You will see the value in there and so on. Like you, you just need to try it. But it's the most important thing is to try it sm uh, slowly so that you don't give up, so that you don't set yourself for a failure. Okay, uh, so that I will uh, uh, be done with my rant here. Stefano, we have five minutes left. What would you would you want to say regarding these things here, what we talked about uh, today? A, a little of, um, like a reality check. Uh, Blender Beam is not uh, yet uh, there in terms of a professional tool that can be used uh, like a full spectrum. Let's say. By everyone, no. not by everyone. By no. everyone. No, no, it's not there. The term, in terms of uh, availability of documentation, help, and uh, document, I mean, like a uh, manuals or websites or stuff, you really have to be lucky to meet, uh, for instance, Pedro or other people like Lloyd's. Lloyd's an uh, IFC architect on YouTube. Yassin, uh, Sigma, what is uh, the website that uh, uses uh, Sigma development or something. And uh, 
these are the key elements, uh, especially um, Lloyd with the IFC architect. That for me, at least, it was a breakthrough. Because as you said, I really reinforce on this, on this point because uh, by doing the modeling, you understand IFC. By knowing a, a bit better IFC, you kind of streamline your workflow and everything is like linear. Instead of using and jump from one thing to the other, how many times did I miss an element into the drawing? Because probably the, the, I only had the PDF, for instance, of the drawing, and I couldn't possibly see that particular detail. Only later do you find out that that detail was actually important. And uh, so working with a model, 3D model, uh, it, it takes a little time at the beginning, but I think it's, a, it's, it's totally worth it. Yeah, that that's a great advice. I I completely uh, agree on that. And like I said, like you don't. I would definitely not recommend anyone to start with the thing. Yeah, I want to jump on Blender BIM uh, to change from uh, another tool. I would think like only if you don't have any choice. If you just cannot afford to pay for a Revit license, let's say, then I would recommend you that. You you will need I would say somewhere between maybe two and six months to do the same things that you do with Revit in Blender Beam in different ways, of course, and better when it comes to IFC. But uh, again, like that's only for extreme situations. Most of us still have a choice, right? So I definitely recommend the best approach to succeed with Blender Beam is to start try it, uh, trying it easily. Uh, start with something simple and small and get used to it. Don't get scared by the errors. Try to talk to, to other people. Uh, ask ask me on LinkedIn. Dion Malt is very happy to get yeah, questions. That's, that's, that's the whole point. OSR, yes. OSR forums, OSR live chat. There are so many things that you where you can find people that are interested. And now we start to see more and more people using this tool. And uh, yeah, so start small and make sure you don't give up. I think if you if you do just that, you will see the value. Just to close, if you like, uh, just recently with uh, other Italians, uh, we, we exchanged some ideas about the Blender Beam. And there was some issue with the with Blender Beam itself. So in less than two hours, we were able to contact the developer of Blender Beam and we fixed it. And we it's, had that fixed. Yeah, I, it's amazing. If it, if it happens during the day, if you report an issue and always if it's critical uh, regarding errors, that's going to always be fixed. And uh, it happened like uh, I experienced this many, many, many times. Uh, also during live chats with Dion, we, we spotted the issue and he, he fixed it live, right? So th this is this is uh, the, the true power of open source software and of a community. So, and this is also your way that you actually can contribute to making this product even better. Yeah. Because feedback is as important as contributing to code because people will not know to fix something that they are not aware of, right? So that's that's very, very important, actually. The more people are uh, doing that, like, don't see that as a complaining because that's not the case. Uh -huh. it's, it's, it's considered feedback that's going to be used to get this product even more amazing. So contact us <laughs> if you need to. There are so many ways of contacting us uh, from LinkedIn to Beam Voice, uh, Ozark. So we are almost everywhere. <laughs> no <laughs> excuse now. Yeah. Okay. So thank you very much for joining us. Uh, sorry, we could not answer to all the questions. We got more from uh, from um, uh, Martin Viss. Uh, but uh, again, Martin, this is a topic a bit more advanced. I would say a niche that is quite advanced. I would definitely recommend you to go in the, in the OSR chat and ask there, uh, or uh, open an issue on GitHub, or ask a question on the OSR forums, because I'm sure you'll get help for, from people who have a, 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 some uh, ideas about this. Uh, personally, I don't know much. And again, like uh, wait, sometimes it's important. Uh, in my case, for reinforcement. That's the only thing that I'm preoccupied right now to get the weight for reinforcement for uh, for uh, my guys, my team to be able to prepare, to plan the pack, the working packages and so on, but uh, nothing else so far. And uh, yeah, uh, it will take a while, I well, would guess. Usually use the incidence of the weight uh, compared to the volume. Mm -hmm. In, uh, we don't go as detailed as uh, developer. You do some sample and then you apply the ratio, mm -hmm. you know, throughout the model. So throughout the elements, concrete elements. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you know, in, uh, my experience at least yeah by the way well, uh, contact uh, contact uh, i'm on linkedin uh, as much as i can 
I really want to give back what I collected from the community, which is really a strong help. Almost embarrassing. Then. Yeah, it's amazing. Like everyone, everyone in here, it's amazing. And uh, yeah, stay tuned because we are going to make more of this in the future. So stay tuned and uh, yeah, we'll try to help you create your uh, use, use these tools. Like uh, we had master classes about uh, modeling, uh, about uh, model validation, uh, about user of Blender Beam. We are going to try to prepare something that is structured and uh, that's going to help you uh, to do the same things that um, that Stefano has shown you today. Uh, the demo, like uh, we did not really get the time to go through and show you the steps I, by steps I, how to I do. I had far more. I had far more to show you, especially the costing part. But that that takes time. So maybe we'll we'll run another session just to to showcase, and then we'll need a workshop, like a three hours or something like that, to go deep into these things. No problem. Thank you very much for everything, Stefano. Thank you very much, everyone, for uh You're most welcome. Us. Thank you, Petro. Thank you, Petro, because uh... what you are doing is actually good. I really <laughs> appreciate that. Thank you. No, no, you are the only one. Sorry, I'm not trying to, to find it, but it's like you are the only one promoting and being active at this level. So it's thanks to you if uh, we all, all have all of us have a chance to participate in this one. Yeah, I'm happy to do my part if uh, and it looks like yeah, I am um, this I feel that uh, this thing what I'm doing was the right thing to do instead of trying to become a programmer and contribute through code. I feel that this is my my way of trying to keep, help this project and I really believe in it. I really believe in its impact that it can has it can have in the whole industry in in the whole AC. And yeah, I'm trying my best. Thank you. I really appreciate your kind words.